project was an opportunity for me to think about um, kind of urban landscape and think about the ways that uh, maybe urban decay shows up in landscape. Um, I wanted to figure out a way to maybe think about this, this, my relationship to Hyde Park, this neighborhood in St. Louis, that was not just about romanticizing uh, urban decay, but, but also maybe just reimagining what I saw. So. And so I wanted to make a body of work that was at the same time reflecting on landscape, but also like elements of um, kind of weird, I keep thinking of the word bling, like ways that um, when you don't have the money to do, to, when you don't have the money to buy a house and build it from the ground up, how, uh, but you do have money for a new BMW, you do have money for a, a nice little purse that maybe uh, that purse and its value and its cost means a whole lot and it's one it's another way of celebrating value so the 24 karat gold leaf and the, the aluminum they're all attempts to kind of think about how uh, urban urbanness rubs up against a certain kind of poverty and how poverty rubs up against dignity those things together make for a really rich landscape. Uh, Hyde Park, it has elements of poverty, but it also has elements of like richness that people overlook because they see uh, that a building is torn down uh -huh. here or it lacks a certain kind of infrastructure that people regard as normal mm -hmm. or people regard as uh, uh, safe or mm -hmm. Middle class, uh -huh. upwardly mobile. Right. It's pretty interesting to see the relation with the um, show across the street or the Matic Park exhibit. Um, seeing how he repurposes um, old buildings and uh, the other. But I think more interestingly, besides the, the physical repurposing of um, these artifacts of um, habitation in St. Louis, I think the more interesting part of his work is how he engages the people who are left in these that he sources from. Um, and so it's interesting that he includes the remnants of the community, but also in several ways. Park, um, I thought I would, you know, this, this show is in part about Gordon Matta Clark. And, it was, and so I thought, you know, I could go to Hyde Park. I could cut up a building. There's a lot of abandoned buildings. And uh, land a piece of that cut up building in, in Bruno David Gallery. And when I got to Hyde Park and started working with these young people, I just thought, um, I don't want to take anything else from Hyde Park. Like, people are always taking things. They're always leaving Hyde Park. There's all, it's always exporting, exporting all the best things. And so, um, so to a certain degree, I think the poems that they wrote, the I can't remember the exact term for it, but looking at a building and personifying it um, was a good start for everyone involved to imagine what a space could become if activated. What does it look like when it's alive? Um, this being, in a way. And so their words, I think, were good for the Aster to work with and kind of play around with and, and, and shape in a way that I think has added a lot of layers to the paintings that are otherwise wouldn't have been there.
process, I think, for Gaster is it is more of a community effort. Um, it's all about engaging communities and imagining with people what a thing can become or look like. So, you know, these paintings, for instance, working with a painter and using words to describe to her what he wants this thing to look like and then allowing her to kind of go off on her own and reinterpret what's been said and then going on top of that with another fabricator to kind of bling it out, as we'll say, with the gold leaf and the silver and um, just these layers of conversations that have been had over time and then this thing is created. Actually, could you talk about this piece? Sure. Well, I know for a fact that the paneling here is from the house that he's currently rehabbing in Chicago uh, that will become a center for culture. <laughs> um, and so kind of using materials that otherwise would have been discarded and creating a throne of sorts out of trash, essentially. This is But in some ways, the works exist on the wooden panels that I, I used at the Whitney Biennial at the Museum of Contemporary Art. They're, they're, um, that the wooden panels themselves are, in fact, sculptural. They're a way of kind of reclaiming urban, kind of the post-industrial, and the fact that the boards were um, going to be discarded, and that I wanted to figure out a way of celebrating the boards one more time. So the paintings are an attempt to reclaim the post-industrial and make, again, these things that are seemingly uh, unusable and unnecessary valuable, potent, 